What's going on guys? I'm Danny with Lanier Lawn Care and we are here at GIE 2021 coming at you from Echo's Outdoor Booth. Today we are going to be speaking with John Powers about the 56 volt E-Force new battery powered equipment. John, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure. My name is John Powers. I'm Director of Product Management here at Echo Incorporated. I've been with the company for 14 years in December. Um, been in product management basically the entire time that I've been with the company. I've had responsibility for about every product category that we make and uh, my team is was the one that's been responsible for developing the Force 56 volt Rhino. So it's uh, been our main priority for the last about 18 months and it's, it's something that we're super excited about this year. Now as a lot of you know battery powered equipment is coming a long way. When it first started two or three years ago when we first started seeing a lot of these commercial people try to get into this industry we laughed as a lot of landscapers would but every year it seems to build up more and more so eventually I honestly believe that it could possibly take over the whole gas part regardless of what region of the U.S. you're in. So today we're going to talk with John. We're going to get a little bit of questions that I'm personally interested in, along with some that hopefully you're interested in as well, and uh, see if we can't fulfill this void in our head of what the battery-powered equipment is capable of. So John, let's talk about the decibels of this battery-powered equipment. Uh, a lot of people worry that the decibels could be around the same as a battery power, or I'm sorry, as a gas power, depending on what unit. You know, let's say somebody buys a 580. It's not very loud, but how does that compare to something that's battery powered? Yeah, the battery powered units in pretty much every application are going to be at a lower uh, overall sound level than the equivalent gas unit. Um, and for especially for a commercial landscaper, that's really a critical uh, feature to have. If you have anybody who's working in an environment where they want to start maybe work early in the morning, or if they're working in areas that are a little more noise sensitive, for example, around like a hospital, if you need to go trim some hedges up near uh, near some windows or something, it's really nice to have that option to have the lower noise uh, piece of equipment. And that's awesome because, you, like he mentioned, you could be at a, a client's house trimming hedges early in the morning and them not even know you're out there compared to you showing up starting a, a loud piece of hedge trimmer equipment we all know that it can get pretty loud whenever you're holding that thing full throttle going to town on some hedges so let's talk about the battery packs um, now looking at some of the specs that the 2.5 amp puts out uh, runtime wise is pretty impressive on, on, mm -hmm. to me and so what other battery sizes are there and can you tell us a, a little bit about some of the chargers that are going to be available? Sure, so we have two different battery sizes available in the E-Force lineup. We have a 2.5 amp hour battery and a 5 amp hour battery. The 2.5 amp hour is what comes standard with a lot of the tools. Uh, we have a couple of tools like the lawnmower um, and the rear handle chainsaw and then the DSRM 2600 that comes standard with the 5 amp hour battery. If somebody wants to buy an accessory battery, the 2.5 amp hour is available for $149 retail. The 5 amp hour is available for $199 retail. We also have two different chargers available. We have a kind of a standard charger, which is what comes, comes obviously standard with most of the units. Um, if somebody wants an additional one of those, it retails for $69.99. Um, and then we have a rapid charger available that retails for $99.99. So here's the big question because a lot of landscapers that get into this uh, are probably going to be storing this on their, you know, charging their batteries in their truck or in their trailer or something. Is there a multi-pack charger or something like that that's, that's going to be in the works soon? It's something that we're definitely looking at. You know, uh, we, we kind of focused on getting a, a wide range of units out as part of our initial launch, but, you know, we're definitely not done with product development. We'll continue to develop products on the eForce e -Force platform, uh, similar to what you've seen from us over the last several years with the, uh, the number of gas products that we've launched. And uh, we're going to be talking very heavily with end users. You know, we're really close to the end user and what they need. And we'll be talking with them, gathering all the feedback on what they're looking for, and uh, we'll deliver as many solutions as we can. And as we can tell, if y'all haven't noticed, they went from a 58 volt system that they released a couple years ago to a 56 volt system. And if you look at the run time between the 58 and the 56, it is totally crazy how they made a 56 volt with the run time that they did, especially with a 2.5 amp hour battery is very impressive. So I, being in the field a lot, 
When it comes to rain, this is probably one of the biggest questions I feel that people would really like to know. Uh, let's say it, it starts raining and now I'm stuck out in the weather. How is this going to hold up to, uh, I mean, do I have any worries? Um, or should, is there a, you know, a, a time limit that I should say, okay, well, it's, it's pretty much downpouring now. Let me stop what I'm doing. Um, or is this stuff going to get me through, you know, the, the other 10 minutes of trimming I got? Or how, do, how should we look at that? Yeah, a lot of the tools in the E-Force lineup are IPX4 rated, uh, which means that they are resistant to um, kind of your normal, very light rain. Um, you know, if it's a downpour, obviously there's, you might have some bigger concerns like lightning and nobody should be out using <laughs> anything in, in those conditions. So obviously if that's the case, you want to want to move indoors, but um, in a very light rain, yeah, they'll be fine. Sweet. All right, so let's talk about battery versus gas. And what's some pros and cons of me personally switching over from battery or to battery from gas when I don't live in a part of the region per se that is required to do something like that or my city's not, you know, at the point of requiring it yet. Is there a benefit for me to actually make that that transition? There are several uh, advantages for battery over gas and a lot of it has to do with the lower noise. Um, that does give some advantages in terms of start times. I, I see that in particular in some of the hotter areas of the country. Um, a lot of the users that I talk to in Florida, um, they want to start as early as possible in the day um, just because it gets so hot during the summer that they want to be stopping work, you know, before the peak temperatures of the day. So um, being able to start the job off with the battery equipment allows them to get an earlier start in the day so they're not as fatigued at the end of the day. Um, that obviously is, is an advantage. Um, also, there are some areas that um, if it, even if it's not required at the municipal level, I've seen some companies that, um, you know, they want to have battery equipment used on their uh, premise. Like, for example, I, I went to an, uh, an Apple facility um, years ago in Dallas that um, they said that they required battery equipment um, on site there. And, you know, there are some opportunities for commercial landscapers to maybe get a little bit more business if they have that option of having the battery equipment available. I never looked at it like that. Like, I've, I've never... I've heard of that, but uh, it's not something that comes to my mind first thing when I when I ask a question like that. It's not something that you know. So I'm glad you mentioned that because that's that's a great way to get more business. Uh, it's, even if you switch over to gas later on in the day, at least you can still start earlier, be more productive in your business, get more done. All right, so John, there's a ton of battery powered equipment out there. If it's not shoved in this direction, it's shoved to us from another direction. Uh, everybody seems to be getting into that battery part of the, the business. So if you could answer this question, I would be, <laughs> it'd be great. What sets the 56 volt E-Force apart from other brands on the market that I could go purchase? Yeah, you know, obviously my answer is going to be biased because I help work on it. So uh, that's a true statement. We'll just put that aside for a second. So uh, what really sets it apart is echo the company. You know, we're experts in handheld outdoor power equipment from a range of users all the way from, you know, a more residential focused customer all the way up to full professionals. And what we've really, what we've done with the eForce platform is to take all of our knowledge that we've acquired over the, the 50 years that we've been making outdoor power equipment and made a system that works for that entire range of users. Everybody from a residential customer um, that wants to just cut their lawn on the weekends all the way up to a professional user that's out there cutting lawns day after day after day. We have a range of equipment that can meet that full range of users. That's awesome, John. Yep. I totally appreciate your time that you have taken to answer all these questions. I know it helped me. It helped give me great information. Hopefully it helps give you great information as well. So if you don't know, now you know it is Echo's 50 year anniversary as well. So congratulations on that. And uh, hopefully a lot more years to come with their equipment. So thank you for watching. If you haven't, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you in the next one.